Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a brand new Terra Master NAS. I want to talk about the F5422. Now for those that aren't aware, Terra Master is a brand I talk about here on the channel I'd say at least once a month. They are, in my opinion, one of the fastest evolving NAS brands out there. They don't have all the function, features and functionality of two of the top tier brands that I'm not going to mention because let's face it, their logos are in the background. But I do think they are one of those brands that is strongly, strongly fighting for third place amongst brands such as Drobo and Acer Store. Now, the new Terramaster F5422, uh, which I'm just going to call the F5 for the rest of this video, is their quad-core Intel-powered uh, NAS that arrives with one feature that none of the others do at this price level, namely it arrives with 10 gigabit Ethernet. So its previous iteration, I believe the F5421, um, that device had very, very similar specs to this, as well as the Synology TS918 Plus and the TS453BE from Synology and QNAP, respectively. This device here, this 10GB enabled NAS, however, arrives with that 10GB port at a price that's exceptionally competitive. With the VAT and without hard drive media, though, it's around £500. I think about £520 on Amazon right now at the time of recording. And the device has got that quad core Intel uh, Celeron CPU, the J3455, a quad core 1.5 gigahertz CPU that can be burst up to 2.3 gigahertz per core. It also arrives with 4 gig of memory that can be upgraded to the strange 12 gigabyte maximum, TerraMaster say. Um, so that's an 8 gig and a 4 gig, which again, not too sure about that one. And it arrives with both 1 GPE and 10 GPE on the rear. Now, Given that the two NASs I've mentioned that you compare this against both arrive at a higher price tag than that, it's interesting to see how TerraMaster have produced a device like this at that price point. Now, we have talked a lot about TerraMaster NAS on this channel in the past. In fact, I've got quite a few units here in the background that have, you know, are comparable to a number of their contemporaries. But why I talk about TerraMaster being the fastest evolving brand out there is because of the hardware they use and the way their software is developed in such a short space of time. They've, uh, when I, all the NAS brands I talk about here on this channel, and there's pretty much about eight or nine core brands that I talk about when I talk about NAS, TerraMaster has been around for the shortest amount of time, but inversely, their software is one of the best. It's not quite as fluid as the likes of Synology up there. There you go, I called them out, but... It is still very, very good indeed. It's quick, they've got the mobile app. They haven't got as many mobile apps as another brand, but they still have a bunch of apps. They have a bunch of hardware options. And today we're gonna to open this up. We're about three minutes in. I haven't even touched the unit yet. And we're gonna take a good look about what you get for your money, what's good and what's bad, and whether it's worth your data. So the box it arrives in is very, very similar to pretty much all the other TerraMaster boxes. It's a slight uh, darker blue, but that's not really that different. Like a lot of manufacturers out there, most of their hardware arrives in the same retail boxes with a different sticker. I will say, in terms of aesthetic design on the exterior, they're not exactly breaking the boundaries. I still think Acer Store and QNAP are kind of winning in terms of aesthetic appeal of their retail packaging, which I know a number of you doesn't matter, but I'm from a PC 90s gamer gen. We love external packaging, I'm sorry. Anyway, inside we have a box of accessories and we have the unit itself. Good bit of packaging there to stop it moving around in transit. We'll get that out of there. There's nothing more in that retail box. Before we get to the unit, let's see which accessories we get, because what I'll be interested to see is whether they include a screwdriver. Now, I've got a story behind that, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, yes, we do. It arrives with a screwdriver. I'll get to that in a bit. It arrives with an external power brick. This is a 90 watt external power supply. We have got an external uh, power connector. And again, if you order from the guys at span.com, they will ensure that you get your regional power connector inside. I think my light's being a bit strange there. Let's get that light a little bit of a twink. And on top of that, we have got an, um, an RJ Cat 5E, RJ45 LAN cable, which can be used for both the one gigabit Ethernet and the 10 GBE port, because they're both copper or 10G base T in the case of the 10 gigabit Ethernet, and uh, uh, the 10G is backwards compatible, though of course, you'll only get the speed of the connection you put into it. We also have a bunch of screws for two and a half inch and three and a half inch drive media. We have got additional rubberized feet for the base of the device, and we have got stickers, warranty information, 
and a first start installation guide. So lots of accessories there. Now I said I'd talk about, um, I'll leave the PSU there, I'll get to that as well. The reason I mentioned the screwdriver is uh, this isn't the only Terramaster screwdriver I've got. I've actually got another one here. Now for those who have watched several of these videos, and again, I'm very, very sorry, let's face it, they're fairly dull, but this screwdriver that came with the other one is without a doubt one of the best screwdrivers I've ever had for free. This screwdriver I've used in a number of different videos, and as far as quality goes, it's actually quite nice. Now, don't get me wrong, there is no reason for you to buy all of this for the sake of a frigging screwdriver. But it was just the fact that I did think it worth highlighting that now, almost a year and a half ago, when I reviewed the 4-bay dual core Terramaster and it came with this screwdriver, this is the screwdriver you've seen me use in so many of these videos because it was that good. Um, which is quite weird. Normally you get those kind of crappy ones you, you would expect to get in like crackers or something. Another thing I want to highlight is external power brick. Now the reason I want to talk about it <coughs> is the two NAS I'm comparing this device to the most are obviously going to be that DS918 Plus and that TS453BE. It's heightened that light there. One of my lights does not want to play the game today. Now, the reason I'm focusing on the power brick is this is a 90 watt PSU. And in the case of the Synology, the DS918 Plus, it arrives with 120 watt PSU. Now, don't get me wrong, I know the 918 has got those NVMe SSD slots, something this device doesn't have. But for the energy conscious, the, uh, uh, the power brick, if you're running in limited power circumstances or you're going to be having it on idle a great deal, the power brick you want is that you don't want a power brick that's going to draw too much. And the bigger the power brick you've got, I know you're not going to use all the power, but and it will only use as much as you need, the minute you've got that 120 watt power brick, it will open the floodgate and the doors to pulling more power when a lot of the time you don't need to do that. And for those on metered power or intermittent power or drawing from a UPS, a smaller PSU is beneficial because it is kind of, it indicates a lot about the unit when it's in use. Additionally, Remember, even though this doesn't have those SSD um, NVMe slots built into the bottom of the device, which, by the way, shouldn't require that much additional power, it does have 10 gigabit Ethernet, which does use quite a lot of power when compared to traditional network connections. And therefore, it's, I think it's all right that they've kept to that 90 watt PSU, and it would have been very, very easy for them to ramp up to a 120 or 160 or more. So, that's enough talking about the accessories in this review. Let's talk about the damn unit. So we've got more foam, got more foam, and we've got the unit. Now, full disclosure, I'm a big fan of Terramaster, and as you may have noticed, and of all the brands I talk about, one of the reasons I love talking about them, for two reasons really, is one, they were one of the first brands I reviewed on this channel, I say reviewed, overviewed, very early on. And also, they've just developed so much and in some cases which you're going to hear me talking about later on they've actually developed faster than they should have one point later on with the port so keep an eye open for that now the front of the device the design they've gone for is mostly hard drive let's have a look at that chassis there it's quite you know it, it's actually surprisingly discreet for a four bay most of its depth is where everything's gone with the main controller board at the rear and very little on the sides now we have five, uh, five trays built into the front of this device, as well as LEDs that denote system access, drive health, NAS access, and lots of other stuff there, along with a power button, but no front-mounted USB copy button. Now, the trays are plastic in design, and they have moved on quite a lot in the last few years. We've got the additional ventilation built there into the front. We've got screw holes for two and a half inch and three and a half inch drives along with the illustrious screwdriver and the um, screw to attach all the drives you want. And it's worth mentioning a couple of things. One, this device does support the very latest RAID configurations from RAID 0 to RAID 1, RAID 5, RAID 6, RAID 10, etc. But you don't need to fully populate this device in order to use it. You can get away with a single drive and add drives as you need them and expand the RAID accordingly. Additionally, you can take advantage of something called SSD caching that I talked about on the channel, which is when you populate one or more bays with SSDs to greatly improve the read and or write of the internal device. And that is something that this device gives you. And if you're going to take advantage of 10 gigabit Ethernet, then you will definitely see the benefits of that. Now, 
The five bays there, the device does support EXT4 file format and BTRFS, and it's worth highlighting, if I pop that there for a second, that the TOS software that it arrives at, the very latest version, is actually a beta out there that I'm going to be overviewing on this channel with this very device in the next week or so. But the TOS software, although it doesn't have as many first-party apps as either QNAP or Synology, and in fact even less than Acer Store, what I will say is it does have a number of key features and functionality that a lot of you will find interesting, as well as support for a number of third-party applications. Now, on the downside, although they have a virtual machine application, it's not what you're used to with the bigger brand, and it's more um, Java, and it's not as good. It's definitely not anything as reliable or as relatable as some of the top-tier stuff the enterprise users are using. You can use it as a nice guzzy or targeted drive, for use within that software, that's open to you. But another area that they're missing out on is surveillance. There is no dedicated surveillance software with this device, which is a real disappointment right now if you buy it retail because surveillance NAS use and um, VM use is something that is no longer just enterprise. And I'm seeing more and more home to mid users taking advantage of VMs and surveillance NAS in the home or business. So that's two areas where I think TerraMaster could really stand to learn a little bit more about what users want. Another one we're gonna to get to very shortly. Now, the chassis is a combination of metal and plastic. It's surrounded all the way around there. I'm sick of that light, so we're just gonna turn that light off. I could cut this out, but I'm not going to. We're just gonna leave that running live. And on top of that, they're branded on the side, but there's no ventilation like you find in the likes of Synology, or in some cases QNAP, because the sides of this device have got almost no hardware built into them. In the case of those devices, when you have ventilation on the side, it's because they have a controller board where a lot of the RAM is installed built into them. This doesn't have that with all of the cooling happening on the rear. Also, the cheese grater on the base. Now, the device arrives with additional um, feet that you can replace these if something happens. But the main idea that these maybe between three and five mil raised feet here on the bottom keep the device raised for this enormous amount of ventilation, assisting the drives or SSDs to keep things nice and cool with that great active airflow happening from those rear fans. Now, here we go onto the rear of the connections, but once again, we're gonna take a short break to talk about software and talk about that TOS application once again. Now, I know they, they, I didn't mention, I mentioned there was no real, you know, current VM support and no surveillance support, but there's great support for things like Plex Media Server. Apple Time Machine is supported on it, along with DLNA Media Support, 4K playback and transcoding, as well as a whole host of standard NAS applications. There are things like R-Sync for synchronizing the device with other NASes to keep your files in multiple locations and off-site, and applications between uh, backing up to USB drives on a scheduled or automated fashion or backing up to a cloud service provider. So that means your data can go off-site and on the NAS as another tier of your backup strategy, as well as the application if you install it on iOS or Windows or, or Android devices, you can back all of those up periodically to the NAS and then have the NAS back up to another NAS, the cloud or USB. You've got a lot of options open to you. Now, if we look at the rear, I'm going to get my disappointment out the way, straight out of the trap. What do you see there at the very top, or I'm not going to go left or right, I'm not sure how you're seeing it, that corner. Do you see that HDMI port? They've even put HDMI next to it to let you know it's HDMI. Now, I have not tested this device yet. I've literally got it out of the packaging. But the, its predecessor that I had on the channel before was a four bay Intel powered device that featured an HDMI port. It might have been a five bay actually, I should double check. That device had HDMI too, but the HDMI was not active. Now, if you look at brands like Acer Store and QNAP, you know they have HDMI output in HDMI 1.4B, which gives you 1080p at 60 frames per second and 4K at 30 frames per second. This is 1.4B. Or um, HDMI 2.0A, which is 60 frames per second 4K. The way they can do that is they have a dedicated graphical user interface or GUI available via the HDMI port, as well as support of things like keyboard, video, mouse, or applications that let you browse or have a remote control that lets you control what you're seeing on screen. This device has the HDMI output, but it only provides a kind of Linux DOS looking 
back end that you've got almost no control over in the grand scheme of things. What I'm saying is, if you're buying this device and you're factoring in HDMI, hold your high horses there for a second because at the moment, there is no support for HDMI output within those applications per se. I spoke to them several times about this because I was so gutted before. I was even going to do a dedicated video on the HDMI output of Terramaster NAS. I was gutted to find that it didn't have it, particularly because I don't think there's enough HDMI output NASes in the industry right now. But they were telling me that they are looking into it, but there are other things they're focusing on. And although they do want to bring HDMI output, hence the inclusion of the port, it does require a large update to TOS, which may come at a later date. So if you're buying this for the HDMI, it is something that I think TerraMaster are going to activate down the line, but it's not something you can use effectively right now. So yeah, a real bummer, that one. And that's my example, really, along with the other one, um, about the evolution of TerraMaster being so fast, but in some cases, too fast. Because they've included that there, and I think some people are gonna feel a bit short-changed if they've not watched this video or heard about the HDMI not being supported. So if you took one thing from this video, let that be it. And I hope that's not the only thing you took. That's wildly offensive. But if we look at the rear device, we can continue to see a couple of USB 3 ports. And what that means is it supports a whole bunch of USB peripherals. You've got wireless devices, dongle devices, adapters, and of course, external storage for backing up and making external devices, uh, external storage network accessible. And all of that can be controlled, activated, disabled, and you know, safely removed from the mobile app or from the desktop uh, browser-based user interface, that gr graphical user interface uh, that isn't available on HDMI. Now, there are two LAN ports, which of course mean uh, here are one GBE LAN that allow you to take advantage of link aggregation. So each though, even though both of them are one gigabit Ethernet, together you can, with lag or port trunking, get two gigabit Ethernet out of them by feeding this into a smart lag supported switch and then other connected devices on the network. But of course, you need to have lag in order to take advantage of lag each way. But the real thing to get interested in is that port. That 10 GBE port is the money maker. The reason being that with that port, you can effectively have 10 gigabits of connectivity with the device, effectively 1000 megabytes per second. And now, if you look at uh, Terramaster's own website, they do recommend that if you fully populate this with traditional hard drive, you get around five to 600 megabytes. I think with that CPU and the right media, so a combination of hard drives and SSD cache, or enterprise level hard drives in every bay, or SSD only, I reckon you're gonna be looking at 800 to 1000 megs easy. Now, that 10 gigabit ethernet can be utilized in a number of ways. If you connect directly to the NAS, that is to say, that you have an ethernet cable from your PC or Mac running into the NAS, no router in the middle, and that connection there is 10 GBE, or using a Thunderbolt 10 GBE adapter or any number of adapters, another plug for the 5G adapter for QNAP there. If you're using an adapter, you can then edit files and access files at 10 times the traditional speed that you would get over the network generally. So that means you can edit photos, you can uh, raw photos, big old massive photos, you can edit video over this, you can run a Steam library and that is a test I'm going to do. And there was a comment on my previous Steam video about anti-cheat devices, I'm hoping going to explore that as well. Thanks you once again for that uh, comment. You had a solid name by the way, I'm so sorry I've forgotten it for the video. I'll hopefully put a note for you in the comments there. But on top of that, with that 10 GB, you can do much, much faster backups. And if you're running another server or another database that you need regular backups for and you've got the ability to add a 10 GB adapter or add a, um, a, t a PCIe card that, you know, they are, you know, somewhere between 80 to maybe 160 pounds for a dual, co uh, dual port card in some cases, you can install a PCIe 10 G base card, run that directly into this device and back up insanely fast from that core database. But, Another cool thing about it is if you have some of these more modern smart switches or some switches like the combo switch up here, the QSW3081C, if you have that switch, which is a much af more affordable 10 GBE switch than most because it has one 10 GBE port, it has another SFP, there's a bunch of them, and there are lots of one GBE ports, you can then connect a NAS like this by a 10 GBE to the switch, and then all of your connected users that are getting one GBE will all get full 
100 or so megabytes connection to the NAS, whereas uh, simultaneously, whereas if you add this NAS connected via one GBE to the switch, all of those one GBE connected users, the minute one extra user connects, so there's one user, then two users, then three users, the minute more users connect, the bandwidth and the connection between you and the NAS gets split down again and again. And the result will be that if you've got a 1G connection between this NAS and your network and five users connect at once, they will be lucky to get 20 megabits per second each, a megabyte per second each read write. Whereas if this is connected via 10, all of those users are going to get 100 easy if they're connected via 1GB. And that's the point. And that's kind of the main reason I love this device so much because there's no avoiding. In terms of design, it is going to divide opinion. I know a number of you out there are in love with the Synology black design or the QNAP quirky design. And again, QNAP are the hardware innovators. I'm not suggesting these guys are the hardware innovators. What I will say though, is this brand has not been around that long and they have accelerated exceptionally well. And as I said a year ago, you know, look where we are now with an affordable 10 GBE Intel powered solution one year ago, they were tip top. One year again, here they are again. And let's see where they're going to be a year from now. Thank you so much for watching. There's going to be an overview of QTS and there's going to be another look at that beta. Hopefully we're going to do standard uh, TOS even. Uh, and then we're going to do the TOS beta and see how they compare. And of course, we're going to see how this compares with the likes of the DS Nominate Plus and TS453BE with Eddie the Web Guy on the other YouTube channel. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. Do put a comment below if I have been any help to you whatsoever or there's something you want to recommend for a future video. But otherwise, click the bell to learn more about NAS and I'll see you next time.